Is there something you want to say to the camera? Yeah, I do, but I want to go out there because, come on then, this is all in the art of filmmaking. We do this. Yeah. <laughs> you always wanted a life less ordinary. I did, and I certainly got it on Salty Last, so what the heck, let's go for it. Okay, so uh, we've got this on and we've had it for a while. It's... Oops, it's not supposed to be down here. It's supposed to be up there. But as you can see, it's, uh, it's had its day. It was made out of an old piece of denim and it is just worn. The, the ropes have done that damage. UV has also done damage. So this is now quite, yeah very easily rippable and it's just so it's basically had it and you can see that you know it's just gone so what Gainer has done is she's made a nice new one out of acrylic canvas now for those of you who are not in the know acrylic canvas is the stuff that book canopies are made out of and sail bags and things like that. so we're hoping it'll be a bit tougher so this one's going to get replaced and that one's going to get replaced because the principal use of these things is as squeak preventers and what's a squeak preventer? If you've been inside there with one of these nylon springs rubbing merrily away, you'll know what a squeak preventer is. These stop the noise of the springs rubbing on the fair leads. And it's the difference between having somebody hammering on the boat all day and having a nice quiet night. So we've got to get these replaced. Okay, so um, we made, I made these um, examples of these last year and they are very simple. All I've got is a square, and then I've got Velcro um, on either side so that they can make a tube. But um, I bought very expensive Vel uh, Velcro uh, this time, which had a better glue. I can tell you now, that good glue was actually a curse in reality. Uh, you've still got to stitch it because the glue's just not up to the job, um, you know, for every day. But the other problem is it just made my um, needle very sticky so it slowed the production of them down quite a bit. You'd have been better with a cheap glue? It, yeah. Or none? No, no, no glue or a cheap glue because you can't you can't get away from not stitching them they've got to be stitched so no glue but certainly the expensive glue all that happened was um, it slowed production down because... Um, right so what have you got in this thing? Uh, in this? Yeah, it's just um, a square. I know. Go on. And then I've got Velcro on the other side. And that's my tube. And how does it work? Well, you just um, wrap it round the rope and uh, it gets the damage and not your rope. Right, shall we get on with it then? Absolutely, go. <laughs>
constitutional walk, totally soaked, but it is a good excuse to show you we first spent our very first earnings from our YouTube uh, earnings on a dehumidifier and uh, we're going to put it on because we're soaked Oops. and uh, the good thing about it is is it will actually dry our clothes so we're just going to hang them around the uh, boat and we're going to get some drying done in here. I'm going to get some mushroom sipping done. Oh, and Bev's going to be uh, serving up the mushroom soup, but... Uh, it's back... Oh. It's, whoa! It's back into the two bunks. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, that was a good constitutional walk. So we just want to look around after a storm like that. You know, it's always worth just checking things. And there's been a few boats that have sustained some damage. Um, and we're going to go and investigate those now for you, just to show you the kind of damage that can be done. Um, but um, main things are lines can get worn. Um, we know of one line that parted. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit paranoid with lines. When it comes to big storm and things like that, I put double lines on everywhere. I've got, I've got preventer lines in the front. I've got uh, double springs on. I class Beverly as a worry wart, uh, and I've told her that she's a worry wart on many occasions. However, I have decided that it's better to have a worry wart than somebody who's like me well, and too blasé, <laughs> to say the least. And you don't want your boat looking like this one. As you can see from uh, this uh, boat, this actually did have a, a hole earlier today, um, but they've been out with uh, good old gaffer tape. <laughs> and patched up the hole as best as they can um, until the owners uh, come to no, look we, at it. We don't actually know what happened to it, but we suspect a spring line parted and basically the boat's just been pushed into the pontoon. Uh, certainly there's uh, quite a few chafe ropes um, around um, that area, but just because it's a storm, the marina just gets um, blogged up with uh, different pieces of wood and... Um, but it was seaweed. A, it we was, pulled out a tree the, uh, this, yes, this morning, didn't we, Ben? <laughs> we did, actually. But it was a particularly bad storm, let's be honest. It was. It's very unusual to have that kind of storm. But, you know, it does happen. I think it's about the second one we've had in a year. Yeah. Maybe the third. But uh, we're just going to go down to um, somebody else's boat, if he doesn't mind being on the blog, because they also sustain some damage. Just because just a storm is a storm is. <laughs> A storm does what a storm, storm does. does. Yeah, totally. Well, this is uh, our friend's boat, and you received some little bit of damage, didn't you, Deb? So what's, uh, what damage did you have? Um, so with the big uh, winds coming through on the weekend, our solar panel decided to take a little journey off its frame. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the aluminium frame um, failed. Um, and ripped off from the zip ties that was holding it down onto the onto the bigger frame. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit exciting to try and retrieve in the winds, but uh, luckily we didn't lose it overboard. Oh, so you've still got it somewhere? Yeah, and luckily we've actually been able to put it back up, but uh, it's now being held on with ratchet straps as the uh, temporary solution. Right, okay, but uh, it was a bit scary initially then. Um, probably scary that you're going to lose an expensive piece of tech overboard. Yeah, especially as a thing. Okay, so I'm at the front of the boat and it's the day after the big storm and we've come to look at our new chief protector that we put on and see how it's held up. Um, you'll notice we have two lines and one of them is extremely loose. That's because this is our backup line. Uh, this is our stretchy nylon that protects the boat. If that parts or breaks for any reason, this is the line that takes the strain and stops Salty Nass's nose crashing into the boats next to us. So it has the other advantage that you can use this one to pull the boat in, pop that one off and just put that, whoops! <laughs> it's escaping! Ah <laughs> oh dear. And the news isn't good. Uh, you can probably see I'll just let that go. You can probably see we have holes. 
So I'll be passing this to Gaynor to have an inspection of shortly. But what concerns me more is this. Because this rope is now toast because two strands out of the eight have now gone. Um, so this is now going to have to be replaced. Well, I'm a little bit disappointed in my beautiful uh, chafe uh, protectors um, out of acrylic canvas. Um, because it's acrylic, we think what's happened is that it's melted. Also, um, it didn't really stop the squeak. Beverly calls these um, squeak preventers. Um, but in the canvas, it didn't actually stop the squeak. Uh, what in actual fact happened was um, the, the fabric melted in some places uh, and has not even lasted, certainly not a month, I think it was a couple of weeks. Whereas at least with the denim, um, you know, that lasted a year. Um, but I've cut up yet another pair of Bevy's trousers. So um, I've also made her a pair of shorts, which hopefully... <laughs> Oh, you know, she'll be um, sporting this summer if we actually have some weather, but um, but yeah, hopefully these will be better. Well, the wind's beginning to pick up, so I need to get this, um, this dodgy line fixed. So what I've done is we have Octoplat Anchor Road, and we've never used it because we don't really like the idea of it, actually. It's never... We've got 50 metres of chain and we've never got deep enough to use the anchor road so we've decided it's just haunting the bottom of the locker it's not doing a lot down there so we may as well take it out so I've got the old sailing knife and it is time for this uh, to come out of the sail locker so just like that go that's that free right so all that's going to happen to this now is it will have a this will have a, a large knot tied in it i know that's messy but i'll sort it out later uh, when i get some whipping twine um but for now i'm just going to monkey's fist it or something similar and that'll just do it for now <laughs> 